All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a video on gapping out six man hot pressures. Had a YouTube live the other night. We were talking about some six man hot stuff, and I was explaining why I like to gap them all out. So I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm going to go through some of that stuff on the board and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Sorry, it's been a couple days since we did a video. I had my daughter's birthday over the weekend. Went to Disney for a day, and then uh, then I got sick for a day or two. So I'm just now getting back to work. So I uh, apologize, haven't had a live video or a new video out uh, in a couple days. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, Dome Hats, headwear company we use, play fast football, the school that I'm currently at. This is one of my Rydell hats from Dome. All right, They make uh, custom quality hats that you can design and build yourself. They have an online hat builder on their website where you can design your own hat, customize it, make it completely yours. Every hat has a story. Make sure you use Dome to help tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods is the company we use, uh, coaching shirts like this, spirit packs, any fan items, my sideline coaches gear, our uniforms are distributed by Baker Sporting Goods. So make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods if you're, uh, if, if you're in the need of any players gear, fan gear, or coaches gear. Unbelievable company. Just play football, all right, digital software, taking your program to the next level. It's a more powerful way to present your information to um, your players and, and your coaches. You can quiz your players on your game plan and, and on your playbook and other things so you actually can find out exactly what they know about the content rather than just getting a yes or no or a head nod. You actually quiz them on the content and you can find out exactly what they know, how long they've been on, how much time they spent on it. Game Strat Sideline Replay Company we use. All right, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, make sure you check out Game Strat. They do great work, customer friendly, their support is unbelievable, and their system has never given us an issue. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Uh, we have one that we use in the off season. Uh, they work on getting thousands of reps without needing a partner, elbows in, thumbs up, uh, uncoiling the hips, everything you need to do where your eyes need to be, change the coil tensions as your kids get better at striking, change the coils to make it more difficult to lev the pad in. Make sure you check out Difference USA. And then high and tight, it's a ball security training aid that we use. It's got sensors inside the panels that make an auditory beep when you are holding the ball correctly. So if you don't have the ball held correctly with the proper points of pressure, you will not hear the beat. If you don't hear the beat, you know that there's something wrong. When you get that ball exactly where you need it with the right points of pressure, makes the auditory beat. Kids learn that muscle memory of where they need to hold the ball to have it held in the correct position to hopefully avoid some of those fumbles down the road. All right, so the other day when we were doing YouTube Live on Saturday night, uh, we started talking a little bit about uh, some six Man, hot pressure stuff, which is you know kind of become a, a little bit more prevalent the last four, five, six years. Uh, I first learned it from Michigan State. Now starting to see it in the NFL a little bit from time to time. Really took off the last couple of years. But six man hot pressure is basically playing two under three deep and sending six. All right. So the reason why I like it so much is is the vision and break underneath players are allowed to play with their eyes in the backfield. They're allowed to play with their eyes on the ball so that it helps a little bit more versus runs while you're also presenting a quasi eight-man front trying to take care of every gap all right when you do that so you're playing an eight-man front you've got all the gaps taken care of and then you're trying to get the ball sent out to those free players who are fitting where needed they're also they also have the ability to and when when you gap out in the interior uh, C gap to C gap when you gap out your blitzes those guys have the ability to walk out a little bit Take away some of the quick throws to number two or number three. All right, we show it with press looks on the outside to kind of invite that fade ball, and then we bail from there. Because when you're showing six man pressure and you get two backers coming, whether it be a Jason backers or a backer on a safety, a lot of times to a quarterback, that's a situation in protection where he may feel like he needs to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And now you have guys that are able to play those quick routes while also being able to help in the run game because their eyes are where they need to be to fit on runs. All right, so, you know, the easiest ones are when you talk about, like, the inside crossfires. All right, so when you talk about, like, the inside Mike and Will crossfires, those are easy. They're always going to be gapped out. All right, you're, you're taking care of C-gap to C-gap. All right, it makes it real easy. All right, the pressure itself, you get the crossfire. You can bring them both in each individual A-gap. You can cross them if you need to be. All right, but then you'll have, for us, we'll have our two down safeties as division and break players, and then we'll rotate to some version of a of a hot three deep that we play a little bit different than a normal three deep, but um, we're expecting the ball to come out quick. We're expecting uh, the quarterback to 
see pressure and try to get the ball out of his hands. So we allow our guys to kind of look in the backfield and do some things a little bit differently than we normally do. All right, so it's a little bit different than, than when we would play our standard three deep. But at the end of the day, all right, three deep, two under, vision and break. If you were to, you know, if you were to use the mic and the wheel, you know, and, and sometimes we'll do it and, and just bring them in the B gap. So, so, you know, now you bring them both there. All right, again, you're bringing two backers, you're bringing two adjacent inside backers, you're gapping out, all right, the front, and you're making sure that you're taking care of C gap to C gap, all right, so that all those interior gaps that played correctly are taken care of. The ball should only be able to work itself out towards, all right, your free hitters or the players that you want to get the ball sent to. Now, anytime we try to get four from a side, for us at least, Anytime we try to get four from a side or we try to get adjacent linebacker safety blitzes, we always want to think about how we can gap it out. So for us, most of the time what I do is I'm going to send four from a side from the side that I've got the one technique and the five technique because I feel like I have the ability to two gap, I'm sorry, uh, long stick, two gap move, my two down linemen, and now I can bring the adjacent linebacker safety pressure, all right, and it appears like it's four from a side, but we never really get four from a side. And the reason we never really get four from a side is we're trying to gap out all six gaps from C gap to C gap. All right, so now when we do this, we would have to rotate. All right, for us, this would be this safety rotating down, and now the mic would be hot with this safety hot, and then our uh, backside safety would have to rotate to be the middle third player. So we're always gonna end up with two underneath hot players, and we're always going to end up with three deep with a post safety. But in order to give us that adjacent inside backer safety blitz that appears to be four from a side, all right, for me, I need to be gapped out, so I am going to long stick my one technique and my five technique to try and get me gapped out in that run game, and then I'll bring uh, the, the adjacent backer and safety blitz off of that. Now, the original way we used to all right, actually bring four from a side from the field, and we've done this before, all right, but I, I started running into issues in the run game with some stuff. But what would happen is if I wanted to truly bring four from a side, all right, and let's just say I wanted to bring, all right, this mic here, and then from the field I wanted to bring the wide safety off the edge, my free safety would have to rotate down there, my left safety would have to rotate back there, and now the hot players would be the will and the free safety. But what happens now is the will actually has an open B gap. All right, he's into the boundary. We would only bring this blitz from the field. We would only bring it versus a team that has a tendency to run the ball, all right, uh, to the field on certain down and distances or situations where maybe they're a jet sweep team, maybe they're a power ring team, maybe there's somebody that likes to try and get the ball to the perimeter. We're going to bring that safety off the edge with the end off the edge as well. So now we've got four on the front side or four, all right, on the blitz side. So we literally are bringing four from a side, all right? The issue we had here is I don't like the open B gap on the back side. Even though the open B gap is played by the will, okay, I've had more success in our six-man pressure hot stuff when we are gapped out on the inside, all right? Now, the thing is with these pressures is you can start to get really exotic with all right, where the, the movement is coming from. You can start to get really exotic with the pass or the tracks of the blitzes, and the more you play with them, the better blitzes you come up with on the whiteboard or on paper. But the key is for us, I'm usually designing my pressures 90% of the time or 85% of the time, I'm designing them to take away run game, to create maybe some tackles for losses, all right, to create some movement or some issues for lime in the block because we see run 80 to 85 percent of the time in the district or the schedule that I play depending on the score of the game most game plans are laid out where we see 80 percent run so most of the time I'm pressuring I'm trying to draw pressures that are solid against runs so when I send my six-man hot pressures I, I have a tendency to draw like everybody else and come up with a lot of crazy scenarios that look good with the tracks and who's coming and presenting different looks to the offense but then if they're not gapped out up front, sometimes we struggle with them and all they are is good blitzes on paper. All right, so, you know, the good thing with this, especially in a three safety system, is you can, you can kind of bring, you know, you can bring the pressure from wherever you want to. All right, one thing that we have done a little bit before, 
All right, sometimes as we've tried to include that free safety in the blitz track, all right, and, and then, again, if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to bring what would appear to be four from the same side, all right, what we've done before is we've used the free safety in the blitz where we have gone, all right, maybe we spike that, maybe we bring the mic in the weak side A gap, we bring him down, and then we get the free safety in the B gap, all right, and now uh, we end up again now with the will, this right safety is the hot players, this left safety would have to spin to be the deep middle third. So we've incorporated the free safety, all right, in the blitzes, but again, when I do that, all right, rather than get four from the same side, okay, what I would try and do is I would try and make sure that we got extremely, or I'm sorry, completely gapped out from side to side. So I would bring the mic into an open A gap, the free safety to an open B gap. Even if I could, I could bring the free safety down and make it, again, just like the mic and the wheel blitz, I could bring the free safety down from depth and make it the double A gap pressure, okay? But the bottom line for me is I like to be gapped out across that front. I like my blitzes to have all six gaps taken care of. So even when I incorporate the free safety, I always try and make sure that I can get it gapped out. Another one that we've all right, used from time to time is bringing it from the weak side. All right, with the free safety coming with the will linebacker. All right, but again, okay, again, what you would have to make sure is you'd have to understand, are you bringing it from the field, you bring it from the boundary. So we've done it before where we've brought, all right, the nose across to that A-gap, leave him there, the will go into that A-gap, the free safety will come into that B-gap, and now we're given the illusion of four from a side. Again, it's really not four from a side because once the nose moves, it's really three on each side. All right, but now in this situation, your left safety is down here playing hot, your mic is hot, your right safety, all right, will come, all right, and play the middle of the field. So that might be something that we do where we set the A and or the one technique to the field, and we bring that from the field so that the mic linebacker is a hot dropper into the boundary. So a couple things that we like to do with our six-man hot pressures, we like to gap them out from C-gap to C-gap, all right, we like to only use inside backers as hot players when they are into the boundary all right we never like to walk our inside backers out to be hot players to the field we like to use them into the boundary we can incorporate the outside safeties we can bring them both off the edge you know one of the easiest ways to get everything gapped out all right is to bring both those guys off the edge but again the issue it creates depending on you got to be careful to personnel groups We'll do it sometimes if it's a, a two by one set or, or we'll do it away from a slot receiver. But the issue you have with, with the edge pressures, even though you'll get completely gapped out, all right, so if you bring double edge and you bring safety edge and you bring safety edge, what ends up happening, all right, is those are your two hot droppers, okay? So depending on where the ball is, if, if it's on a hash marker in the middle of the field and you have a number two removed like this set, these two guys have to walk out to be hot droppers, and we're not the biggest fan of doing that. We don't like moving our inside backers too far out to be hot droppers. We like leaving them in the box. One of the things I've done before is if I had that path on and it was a one-back set like this, I would trade the responsibilities, and I would make the will and the mic become the edge blitzers, and I would let the safety stay the hot guys, so I now get my two safeties as the hot players. But again, the problem with that is it's the same guys you're constantly having those backers blitz. When you want to mix in outside safeties or corners, all right, or, you know, if you wanted to mix a corner into the blitz, all right, again, like into the boundary, however you wanted to do it. If you wanted to, let's say, bring the corner, if you wanted to, for argument's sake, if you wanted to bring the nose across, all right, bring long stick to five, bring the wheel, and now bring the corner, it's the same path you had before with the safety. You're just bringing different people. Now that left safety has to get out, all right, and he has to be able to play that deep third. So this is something we would probably do more from the boundary, all right, because we, what we would probably end up having to do, all right, is the rotation of the secondary now because we have to rotate out to a deep third, okay, is we would either have to consider, all right, doing this to where we rotate the free safety down, if we did this from the field, what I would do from the field is I would take the free safety down to the field to make him hot to the field, my hot to the boundary, and I would bring the backside safety from the boundary to the middle of the field, again, because I don't like my inside backers being hot players to the field. But that's just a way of running different tracks, all right? If you were, 
a little bit concerned with that and you wanted to run this, so if you wanted to run this from the boundary, okay, one thing you could do if you wanted to run it from the boundary is now you could one gap, the end, leave the nose here, bring the mic in the front side A gap, and now bring the corner opposite the mic. Now you've got an inside backer and an opposite corner coming. Now you can leave the will as the inside hot player. Free safety can stay the middle third player, and the right safety can stay the outside hot player there. All right, so if this was the field side, and you wanted to bring the corner from the boundary, and you didn't want the mic to have to drop into the boundary, which is not the end of the world. It's not terrible to drop into the boundary from the front side as the mic. But if you wanted to bring this opposite backer corner pressure, okay, you could do it this way. Be gapped out across the front. Will drops hot into the boundary. Safety drops hot to the field. Free safety's in the middle of the field. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. We love six-man hot pressure. It's been very good to us in the high school setting. All right, when we do it right, when our players understand it, we like to try and involve uh, both inside backers, adjacent inside backer blitzes. If we can get both safeties off the edge, depending on the formation and where the ball is, that's great. If we can get the inside linebackers off the edge, it's just as good for us and leave the safeties as the hot. We like to bring adjacent safety backer blitzes to give the appearance of four from the side. We like to sneak the corner in every once in a while and, and bring him in our six-man pressure. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but... My suggestion to everybody, and again, just my opinion, my suggestion, because we see so much run, unless you know it's something that you're doing on a passing down from a team that you don't feel like you're going to get screened or you feel good against screens or whatever the deal is, sometimes you might have a six-man pressure like this drawn up on a, on a third and long down, and two of those guys might actually end up being screen players that show. I've, I've seen it done before where the two edge blitzers show edge pressure, take two steps up the field and then kind of freeze so that they can play screen so that you give the illusion of the six-man hop, but you're really only sending four. Um, so you can do it however you want. You can get fancy with it. You can draw up different tracks. You can move the linemen to different places. At the end of the day, though, my suggestion is you make sure you try to get gapped out as often as possible from C-gap to C-gap to help you defend runs and to make it a little bit easier on those vision and break hot players to fold where needed because they shouldn't be needed when you're gapped out inside, the ball should work its way out to them. All right, but you can do it with an open B gap into the boundary. You can do it however you know. You can do it however you want. But for us, because we have to spend so much time worrying about defending run game, I try to get my six man pressures gapped out from C gap to C gap. All right, so hopefully that helps you guys out. I appreciate everything you do for play fast football. Make sure you check out some of our, our sponsors. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you know every time we do a video. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whether you like the video or you don't, it always helps me understand what we need to do with content or how we need to do our content or how I need to change my delivery. Leave me a comment. Every comment that I see, I try to reply to, and if it's something about a video that I feel I can do justice to that video, I will try and do that video. All right, if you're getting ready to play football, uh, God bless, congrats. Stay safe out there. Do everything you need to do to get your football season underway. If you're getting ready to go into the spring or into your off season, hopefully all of that is going well and everybody's healthy and working hard. Thanks for everything you do for Play Fast Football. And remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next time.